This is John from TicketMotorbikes.com and we've put together here a collection of bikes that can be used for travelling Vietnam. Over on the left hand side here at the most expensive end we have the Honda XR 150, Suzuki Raider 150, Yamaha Exciter 150, Genuine Honda Blade 110cc Semi-Automatic, Yamaha Nervo Automatic and a Chinese copy of a Honda Win and a Chinese copy of a semi-automatic. This can be a Chinese Dream, a Chinese Wave, or in this case, a Chinese copy of a Yamaha Sirius. Now these are the cheapest bikes to buy here and also the cheapest bikes to fix. When I sell a Chinese semi-automatic, I'll tell a customer you're likely to spend about $50 in maintenance to get across the country. So being Chinese, they can break down. They also don't have a lot of power. But if you're on a very tight budget, they're not a bad bike to get. Here we have a Chinese copy of a Honda Win. Now these are the most popular bikes for backpacking Vietnam, but ironically, they're also probably the worst bike for backpacking here. They are incredibly unreliable and surprisingly expensive to fix. When I sell one of these, I'll tell a customer you're likely to spend about $70 to $100 in maintenance to get across the country. Now keep in mind we are a reputable dealer on TripAdvisor and things. If you go getting one of these from a random backpacker or a random street dealer, you can find your maintenance costs are significantly more and can get out of control. They certainly don't go up and down this country without any breakdowns like you read in the adverts. They're also very wobbly to drive, so you can find you just wobble your way through the mountains. Really, the only reason to be getting one of these bikes as if you're on a sort of lads on tour holiday where you enjoy making a lot of noise, you like pushing each other around and laughing at each other when things go wrong. So they can be fun from that point of view. But for most backpackers, it's really not the bike to be getting. Here we have a Yamaha Nervo Automatic. Now these are real Yamaha bikes, just very old. Which means if you get the right one, they can be a great bargain for the money. However, if you get the wrong one, it's a bit like buying an old car in that you can buy a write-off in that fixing the bike is worth more than the bike, i.e. your holiday is over before it's even started. With the Chinese copies over here, it's like Lego. They break down, you fix it. They break down, you fix it. But with a genuine bike like this, the parts are expensive. So you go buying the wrong one and you can find you've really messed up. You get the right one and you have a great bargain for your money. So not a bad choice if you know what you're doing. Here we have a genuine Honda Blade 110cc semi-automatic. Now this is a bike we like to use for backpacking Vietnam. Now being a genuine Honda semi-automatic, they are close to being indestructible. They really do never break down. Also, with these bikes, you can fix them in genuine Honda shops, and Honda have the best mechanics in this country. With the Chinese copies over there, Honda will not touch them. They're not interested in trying to help a Chinese bike. With these bikes, they will welcome you with open arms. We're so confident in these higher end bikes, but if you have any problems with them, we will fully reimburse any maintenance costs. They also only need an oil change every thousand kilometers versus an oil change every two to 400 on the cheaper bikes. They don't break down and they have great gas consumption. So you'll find a bike like this over the duration of a journey works out similar or cheaper than trying to buy and sell a cheap backpacker bike over there. So for most travelers, this really is the kind of bike you want to get. Reliable, don't break down, safe to drive, and overall just a pleasure to go through the mountains. Here we have a Yamaha Exciter 150cc. This is the kind of manual bike that you'll see locals driving. You see these everywhere on the streets of Vietnam. They're very powerful for what they are and they have a relatively large frame. If you're wanting a manual bike, you do need to be going into the slightly more expensive end because manuals are considered a luxury goods here, which is why you don't see them that often. So if you get a cheap manual bike like a Honda Win, you're buying a bike that fundamentally doesn't work, get a bike like this and you'll have an awesome little racer for twisting and turning through the mountains. If I was asked to travel to Hanoi tomorrow, this is definitely the bike I would take. A lot of fun. Here we have a Suzuki Raider 150cc 6 speed manual bike. So this is probably the fastest out of all the bikes here. 
And amongst the locals, they have a sort of racing underground pedigree to them. Hardcore enthusiasts tend to drive these sorts of bikes. They're not as common as the Exciter, but you get one of these if you're wanting a bit of flair and bling for your holiday. They make a lot of noise, have good character, lots of fun for twisting and turning through the mountains. Downside being they're very small frame, so if you have some luggage, it's probably not the bike you want to be getting. You'll be better off with the Exciter or the big XR over here. So finally, the Honda XR 150cc. Now this is the largest frame bike out of all of them, which means it's the most comfortable and also the most appropriate for two people. So you want to travel in comfort and style, this is the kind of bike you want to be getting. However, they are import bikes, which means they have a lot of taxes on them, which means they're not that great value for money. If you're wanting bang for your buck, you're better off with the Suzuki Raider or the Yamaha Exciter. But if you're going for comfort or two to a bike, then it is a good choice. It's also worth noting that because it's an import bike, you can't buy parts for them, which means if it breaks down, you're in pretty serious trouble. And we have a lengthy contract about what happens in that situation. Obviously, when you get a bike like this, you don't expect to be breaking down. But it is nice to know with the uh, Slicer and Raider here, if you have a problem, you can fix it. With the XR, unfortunately, that's not the case. So, in summary, if you're coming all this way to Vietnam to travel some of the greatest mountain roads in the world, there really is no point in doing it on a cheap Chinese copy, where even if you are lucky and you buy one that works and doesn't break down too much, you'll find they're wobbly to drive, fundamentally unsafe, and they're basically low quality, cheap toys. You're far better off doing it on a genuine bike that locals drive, pleasurable to drive, safe and reliable. Over a journey, you'll find they're not actually much more expensive, many occasions actually cheaper than trying to buy and sell a cheap bike. So for most people, get a real bike, you'll have far more fun. This is John from TicketMotorbikes.com. I hope you enjoyed this video.